Hey everybody, welcome back. I am Derek, the owner of Flux. For those of you just joining us today, thank you so much. Please be sure to click that subscribe button so we can keep bringing you these videos. So today we've got a really great video we're bringing to you. Uh, I've been hanging on to this one for a while. It's been in the works for quite some time. I get a lot of questions about my tankards, my mugs. How do I do this? How do I get that chiseled lip? How do I do it just right? So this is gonna be a uh, full length, step-by-step -step video, exactly how, uh, how I get there, my process, and what I do. A little bit of backstory on what the inspiration was and where I got the idea for the tankards was. Uh, for those of you who do not know, I share uh, the building with Aaron Johnson. He's the owner of Aaron Johnson Antiques. He owns the building and he downsized a few years ago. Uh, in the process of doing that, he had an auction and he auctioned off a lot of stuff and I had my eye on some old uh, English pewter tankards and cups he had over there. They were just really eye-catching and I liked them a lot. So here it is. This is the tankard. This is from 1820. You can see it's got a great color, the pewter finish, it's getting really weathered. Um, it's got a really nice brass or bronze, I'm not sure which, lip on it. It's got a really great chiseled, undercut, defined lip. I really like the shape of the handle. It's got a great taper both down and to the side. It's got a really fun chiseled thumb hold on top of it. It's got some really great markings on the bottom. But uh, yeah, this was really old and I just really liked it a lot. So I picked it up and I said, you know what, I'm gonna make these out of clay. So um, they're great, they're a lot of fun, they're very popular. I sell quite a few of these uh, throughout the year. But uh, yeah, I got it from Aaron Johnson. So one other thing, be sure to check out their shop. You can visit them online as well. That's AaronJohnsonAntiques.com or they're open Tuesday through Saturday. So give them a call, go down there. Amazing, amazing place. So anyway, uh, let's get started. All right, guys, we've got our clay today and I really make these pretty much exclusively out of porcelain. I'm leaning more and more towards using exclusively porcelain. So this is P60. This is from Rocky Mountain Clay. I have been told this is very similar in formulation to Coleman porcelain. I do really like Coleman porcelain, but this is a little bit cheaper. Um, I find it to be pretty similar, but uh, this is kind of what I'm using at the moment. This is recycled. I save all my scrap, all my buckets. I do recycle my porcelain very carefully because it is so expensive. So got a good chunk out of here and we're gonna go with we're gonna throw a little larger one we're gonna try and match that size and shape pretty well today so I am going to start with two pounds of clay and then we're gonna wedge that up and get throwing all right guys let's talk about a few tools and a few things that I use to do these I have my shem batmate a little bit of water bring that out really good down on our wheel head, over the bat pins, nice and flat. And even if you, uh, no matter what kind of bat you're using, I recommend these because this is going to bite your bat very well. It's going to hold it level and just give it a really good sticky base to put it on. <clears throat> okay, so this bat, this is a special bat. Buddy of mine makes these for me. Uh, they're, uh, so it's a wood bat, but it's, it's a water tight, uh, laminated malamine surfaced uh, bat and it's pressed down with some heat and some industrial strength glue so that it can take a little bit of heat it can take a little bit of fire um, I like this bat a lot because it is nice and slick it's very smooth and it's incredibly level so it's just a fun bat that we kind of um, you know came up with together and uh, if you guys are interested in one of these or would like to purchase one, I do have a few. So shoot me a me uh, message or an email and we can chat about that. So that just goes on. Oh, one other thing. The bat pin holes do not go all the way through the bat. So that's why else I like this. It's just incredibly flat and smooth all the way across. And that just goes right down there. Okay, a few tools I use. 
the metal rib of death, my favorite one. It's got a sharp point. I can use it as a needle. I can use these sharp corners to get into little nooks and crannies and really define those corners and edges as I need. This one especially I like because it also has a nice rounded edge to where I can give some things some contour or some more graceful edges. So I really like this one a lot. <clears throat> my favorite blue or green mud tool silicone rib, a wire, a needle, a chamois, and a sponge. And that's really all I'm gonna need to throw the form of my tanker. All right, as we prepare to throw this, guys, here's a quick little tip, something I've picked up over the years of just practice and failure. Um, so here's my clay, right? It was wedged this way, sideways, right? So as it spirals, and you can kind of see it, a little bit here my hand kind of smooths away the middle of it but we're spiraled this way so with porcelain it's a little more susceptible to cracking and warping and all that garbage that we just really don't like so rather than throwing it down this way so that the spirals are parallel with the throwing surface take your clay and turn it up this way so that the spirals are against the bat and that way when we center it hopefully the goal is that any of those folds or rings or spirals are now pushed out rather than down which can help prevent s cracking through the bottom right there's your pro tip today centered we've opened as you guys can probably see I've opened this pretty wide and that's for a couple reasons one so I can get down here and clean this base really good and make this nice flat and smooth I also like to have a nice 90 degree corner where that wall meets the foot that helps me get a really nice good bite to grab clay and lift it up if the inside is swoop, swooped a little bit it's going to be harder to get a good positive bite without just running up the side of the clay. That way it'll leave, it'll leave thicker clay if you can't get a good bite on it. Also, the shape of my tanker is tapered upward and inward. So as I throw this, I'm going to bite this clay and I'm going to pull up and in. I want to try and keep this into a cone, some sort of inward pointing cylinder, okay? All right, here we go. First pull, good amount of water. And I'm going to start with this sponge hand. Down low, hands together, hold that, slow wheel speed, up we go. So I've got uh, most of the clay up to where I want to go. I've got a rough shape of where I want to be. The porcelain's soft, so when you're working with porcelain, just take your time, and if it starts to ripple and get soft, don't stress. We've got our blue rib to the rescue. I also need this to give me that nice, sharp, straight line on the side. So once I get most of that clay up, I'm gonna come back in here, and I'm now going to bring this up and in a little bit, giving this a nice, straight edge with this rib. One other thing that's really important, I have got a good, chunk of clay that I have left at the top. I know it's kind of counter to everything that we do and when we generally throw, but I always leave this a little thicker because I'm actually going to come back in here and chisel and carve that nice angular lip into the top of this. Start to 
see I'm forming the lip right now. So that's when I come up with that rib and I'm using that sharp corner right there. And as I run this up, I'm gonna stand there and hold it. All right guys, so that's pretty well and started. Now I'm going to take my metal rib of death. Okay, now right now I'm gonna lean on this lip a little bit. I'm gonna start to give it some of that slope, some of that sharp lip right now. Okay, that's just kind of a reference. That's not going to be the end of it. I still am gonna come up in here, define the underneath of it a little bit. And then up top, I still need, I need to bring the inside out a little bit because as I pushed on that, it actually kind of rolled the lip in a little bit. But I can't get those nice sharp angles while it's still soft and floppy. So it's gotta firm up a little bit before I can get in there and really define that lip how I want it to be. Okay, before I can move on, like I mentioned, I need this to be a little more firm. So uh, more and more these days, I am um, finishing mugs, before each mug individually before I move on. So I will at least get for five to handling stage before I throw any more. I do like to kind of finish them as I go, but in order to force dry them a little bit, I'm gonna play with some fire. Okay guys, it's pretty firm. It's not flopping everywhere. It's pretty stiff, so that's good. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I've got my trimming tools in my hand. I'm gonna come in here and I'm really just gonna straighten and clean this edge exactly how I want this line to look up the side of the mug. And then I'm gonna come in here and chisel this lip in really nice. I use a couple different trimming tools. Uh, I've got my favorite uh, trim all mud tool, and then I've got some Kemper tools. Dolan makes the exact same thing. I've used them both. Um, I find them to be very similar in quality. So whatever you like. nicely got a good slope right here so now you can probably see how this curls in a little bit right here we want that nice and straight and that's for a couple reasons one for aesthetics and two because it will help with the flow of the liquid as you're drinking from it if you have a curled in lip on your mug chances are it's going to want to build up and kind of pour around and it can turn into a dribble mug as you're sipping from it so i've got my sharp metal Watch real close. I'm gonna come in here nice and straight. I'm gonna start to shave this down. I think that's looking pretty good. Kind of pushed it out a little bit. I'm just gonna kind of trim this outside just a smidge. And I think I like how that's starting to look. Once I have that set, sometimes I might come in there with the trimming tool. Maybe it's kind of tough to get in there. I just kind of blade that down just a little bit just to get it exactly where I want it. Last thing I'm going to do, take my chamois, clean that up really nice, and I'm holding onto the top, one of the sides, and I'm getting underneath that lip really good. All right, guys, we've come a long way. We've got our body trimmed. We've got the lip set. The next thing I'm going to do, and the last thing, I've got this wooden tool here. It's got a nice, sharp, pointy kind of tapered end to it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach under the bottom and I'm actually gonna fold that foot up a little bit. And that's gonna serve a few purposes. One, aesthetics, I am not going to trim the bottom. I just kind of trim the bottom flat. And so this is gonna serve as some sort of pseudo foot, if you will. It's also going to serve as a glaze collector. When I go to glaze this, if I put some runny drippy glaze on it, it will catch it. So I can still get those nice long drips and all that fun stuff involved with that, but it won't hit the kiln shelf because the curled up foot will collect that. So a little bit of water, spin it, and I'm gonna reach up under here nice and well, and then I'm gonna start to pry it up a little bit. Okay, 
Not so pretty yet. After I rip that up, I'm gonna take my sponge, get a little water on it, and I'm gonna reach under here, and I'm gonna kinda push that in and soften that a little bit so it's not so sharp and pointy, and so it kinda softens the shape of it a little bit. Just like that. All right, and the last thing, we're all done with everything. I've got my wire here. I'm gonna wrap it up real tight, and I'm just going to get right underneath that guy. And we have our mug. All right, guys, next step. I am going to trim the bottom. We got it upside down here. Just got a little wad of clay. I'm just gonna break this up into four small chunks. no matter what you're trimming, sharp tools are essential. Either cut them, you know, you can use a little Dremel and get in here and work that angle down a little bit, or just buy some new ones. You know, they last a decent amount of time unless you're trimming some really, um, you know, rugged and rough stoneware. But on the porcelain, they seem to last a little bit longer. thing I do on the bottom here before we move on to a handle. So I've got some iron oxide here, it's just a little red iron and water. And this is something I've done for a long time. A uh, guy I studied with when I was a young kid, Bill Wilson, showed me this. He just puts a little red iron on here. And then once you sign through that, it makes it so much easier to read the name rather than when you just sign into the clay, it kind of makes it hard to see. So I really like to see the contrast there so you don't have to struggle to read the name on it. So just something kind of fun. And then I've got my metal stamps and I like to put the date on my pots. I started doing this a few years ago. This is the Roman numerals. And these are some of the first pots of 2021 that I've done. Okay, and that's finished on the bottom. We're going to move on to handles now, guys. Okay guys, next step, handles. I pull each handle for all of my mugs individually. I think it makes it a much nicer piece. It gives it a lot more uh, artistic value. And I, I, I just like the, uh, I just like how it looks better. So uh, I'm gonna start with this. This is some more porcelain. And sometimes I will just pull a bunch of handles out of one big chunk of clay. And sometimes I will take my clay, just rip off a little chunk, roll it into a taper and then flatten the sides down. Just like that. I don't need four, but I do need at least two. These pieces are so big, I could easily get two out of each chunk. I'm always, I always make extra. Sometimes they don't work out. Sometimes they break. Sometimes I just don't like how they look. And I like to have, um, you know, uh, I like to have a wider variety and a better choice depending on what handles I like better. So let's pull some handles. All right, guys, so handles. So we've got our wedge. And I'm gonna start like this. I've got my fingers over the top of it. I'm not holding it sideways. I'm not gripped like this and my elbows way up. Kind of gets tired getting up here if you're pulling a bunch of handles, but you gotta power through, hold this straight. You don't wanna be pulling off sideways. You don't want it to be drooping as you're pulling it down. I wanna keep this as straight as possible so when it dries, I have the choice and the flexibility of the finished shape and curvature of the handle. So get a good grip on it. Keep the water off your hand. Keep the water on your right hand if you're a right-handed puller. And on to, we don't quite need all this. So I'm gonna start somewhere about midway because this is more than enough clay. Okay, so start pulling this down. And you'll notice I'm kind of rotating as I pull. I'm trying to keep it somewhat round, but I'm tapering it down. So as you're pulling, make sure you're going all the way through. 
okay? Don't stop or your bottom will build up thick and you'll hit it and then you'll rip your handle. So make sure you're pulling all the way through it each time, whether or not you want it tapered or if you want it straight. So I'm gonna take a couple pulls there and then once I get somewhere about there, I'm gonna switch my grip and I'm gonna start squeezing it like this. A few swipes, plenty of water, and I'm gonna rotate 180. Again, this grip isn't symmetrical, so I have to make that up by flipping the handle around. Does that make sense? Okay, here we go. Pulling down a little bit more, cleaning up the sides when I need to. Pulling down, pulling down. I think I like the shape of that handle. So now I'm gonna come up here. It's kind of hard to see, but I'm going to kind of pinch the top. See how I'm kind of rounding that off a little bit? And I'm just gonna keep pinching that. And then I'm going to just pluck that off. And there's my handle. I'm gonna come over here, set it on my plaster bat so it dries a little quicker and I can use it a little sooner. Let's pull a few more. guys here we go handle time so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna mark out on here where I want to place my handle and I'm gonna do that I want to make sure that that the handle does not crest above the lip that's very important to me I don't like I like to be able to set them down upside down on the counter right and not have them wobbling around so I'm just gonna come I do tuck it pretty tight because I keep the arc pretty low so I'm gonna say somewhere in here if you can see those lines and probably somewhere about here for the tail of it to attach. Okay, it doesn't have to be pretty. This is just a kind of reference for me to come back in here now and score this up really good. And I can clean all these up after I attach the handle. It's always better to have you know, more attachment than not enough. So be sure to go deep and wide on that one. Okay, marked. Set that aside a minute. And here are all our handles. We got all kinds of handles to choose from. So they're on the plaster and they did set up pretty well. So the first thing I'm gonna do is kind of decide which handle I wanna use. I always throw a wide variety of handles. So maybe this guy is pretty long. I think I like this one. No, you know what? We're gonna go over here. Let's see if we can make this guy work. So we've got our handle. And this is kind of tough. I'm gonna get in here as best I can to show you how I do this. But you can see the tail of it here. And I've got this fancy little cheese slicer from Mud Tools. What do they call this? A, uh, a cheese slicer. <laughs> so I'm gonna come up in here. I need to clean all this up and make this a nice round attachment point. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here with my cheese slicer and I'm gonna come up. Can you see that curve I'm making? And come around and that just gives it a nicer, cleaner attachment point. And then I'll just kind of come in here and clean those up a little bit. So once I have that set, I'm gonna just kind of clean up the tail just a little bit. We'll come back in with the sponge and clean up all the edges but that's the handle we're going to start with. The last thing I'm going to do, so my handle, my buddy Mike Stumbross, you may know of his art or know him personally, great guy. He did a workshop with us here in March. And so I garnered a lot of the inspiration for this handle from the way that he does his handles. And I've done my best to really create it and make it my own, but this is really close to how Mike does his handles. His are much more detailed and a whole lot nicer, but I really enjoy this. I like how this looks on my tankard. So Mike, if you're watching, thanks buddy. So I'll take this tail. And what I'm going to do is just kind of rock this edge a little bit, just to kind of give it a different, just kind of rock this over and just give it a little flare where it's going to attach. And you'll see here in just one second as I bring this around. So you kind of see that curve in there? That'll just give it a nice, because it's gonna curve this way and you can kind of see the handle starting to form like that. So when that's attached, it's got a little kick off the mug and it looks really nice. Okay, so that's set, and I'm going to just kind of set it just like this for a moment. Just 
kind of let that firm up just a little bit more. It's pretty firm, but it could use a few more minutes. And then I'm gonna do, so this is a two piece. So that piece is gonna get attached here. It's gonna curve over. And then I've got another piece that kicks off and it's gonna come up. set up pretty well. The next thing we're going to want to do is take our needle and where the handles are going to get attached, right, like this, I want to score this side also. So I'm just going to give this some nice, good, deep score marks so that it's got a good place to bite, just like that. Let's do the top half now. Same thing here. So it's gonna go like this. And now I'm going to hit this really good. There we go. Okay, maybe a little bit lower, just to be sure, because we can always clean this up. Okay, so those are good to go. We've got a little paintbrush action. I've got some nice slip mixed up here, some porcelain slip. And now we're going to get some slip on here. Dab this up really good. And I'm just gonna do the top right now. I don't want this to get saturated down here while I get this top piece on. Okay. So now it's important that your handle is firmed up because I need to kind of push in and I need to whittle this around really good to get those score marks to bite in there. So make sure your handle is set up pretty well. That's where I'm going to start. And you can see this might still be a little floppy right here. I've got a little torch and I can just hit this with a little fire and just kind of firm that up a little bit. Don't dry it out too hard, but it's okay to firm that. And then I can bring that arc up and out a little bit and get that to hold a little bit more fire. Somewhere in there, that's looking pretty good. Now, same thing, second piece. A little bit of slip. Right on the mug. This can be a little trickier because this is a little long, right? And this arc kind of fell on me a little bit. So what we're gonna do. that in real good. Make sure we get a good bite on there. Okay, so here's how we look right now. Way too flat, way too far pushed out. So let's bring this up a little bit. Somewhere in there is looking pretty nice, but this tail is way too long. A little bit of cracking here, that's okay. I dried it just a little bit, just take a little water can bring that back and that's okay as long as we don't have to move it too much more as long as we get set really nice we will be in good shape okay so now I think I like where that handle is but I need to chop off a bunch of this tail so I'm gonna take my cheese cutter and I'm gonna reach in here let's see if I can get a good spot where you guys can see I'm gonna kind of support this I'm gonna run this down I'm gonna chop it oh, right about there for now there we go that's looking pretty good, huh? I like that pretty well. Okay, the last thing, we're just about done, guys. I'm gonna make sure I'm happy with the shape of my handle, how far out it's coming, and I would like to bring that in just a little bit, or bring this arc up, push that in. Looked like it was sagging just a little bit on the top. How's that look? That's looking pretty good, huh? I think I like that 
pretty well. Let's drag that in just a little bit. I like that pretty well. Okay, so once that's holding, this clay is nice and stiff, so that helps for this reason. I'm gonna take a little bit of slip. I'm going to lift this handle up just a little bit, and you maybe can't see, I'm just putting some slip in between the two pieces of handle. Okay, and then I'm gonna pinch that together really good. See the slip squirt out of there? Good. I'm gonna make sure my handle is straight. It's a little crooked. Let's straighten that up just a little bit. Got a little cracking right here. Let's see if we can clean that up. I kind of got a little carried away with the torch, but I think we can bring that right back. A little bit of water. Just clean that up. Great. It's pretty good. Handles together. Let's check the shape again. I like that pretty well. I think I like where we went with that, guys. What do you think? Okay, I'm going to do a little cleanup, and then we're going to come back. I'm going to show you guys how I chop the handle down. All right, guys, a little cleanup, a uh, little finishing touches, a few things about handles. So, um, Aesthetically, for handles, for me anyway, and kind of the general rule of thumb is, you know, I don't like to see the handle come above the top of the mug, and I explain why. Also, for a more appealing mug, I have learned over the years, and I've been taught, the handle should be half the width of the opening out. Okay, so that gives it the most pleasing, and also that kind of starts to fit into the contour of your grip, so that can help that way also. Sometimes as I finish these mugs, I might leave the handle rounded like this, but to kind of give it my own flair and kind of what I got from this, it has this really nice sharp on the tankard here, on the, the pewter one, it has this really nice sharp kick out up here. And so I started to kind of flatten and bring that down on my own. And I kind of liked it and also gave it a little bit more leverage when you're holding it. It's also something kind of fun to hang on to and tinker around with while you're drinking from it. So uh, if I were going to leave it, I'd be done at this point. Let it dry under, uh, under plastic, sign it, disc fire, and off we go. So for this one though, I'm going to show you guys how I do chop that handle flat. Okay, so I'm going to take my needle and I'm going to come up here and I'm going to draw a couple lines. Okay, I don't know if you can see that or not, but I kind of have that marked a little bit. And then I want to make sure that this handle is firm because I'm going to push on a little bit, but I don't need it too dry because if it's too dry and I push on it, I'm going to crack it. So I've got it marked. I've got my wire tool here and I'm just going to come in here and as straight as I can, I'm going to take that first mark and I'm going to draw it in to the mug just right below that lip. Kind of push in a little bit. There we go. And gently lift that piece off. Get that wire out because I want that handle. Do you see how snug it is right to the bottom? Let's see, can you see that? Yeah, so I like that draw chiseled right under that shoulder. There's a lot of sharp angles on this mug, so I kind of wanted to bring that back around with the handle because the shape of the mug is very angular, it's straight, it's solid. To have a curved handle, it can still be nice, but I think it kind of echoes the shape and the angles of the mug if I'm able to kind of incorporate some of that into the handle. Okay, so I've got my first cut in, and now I'm going to take the second draw right up into that line, and I'm going to push and cut nice and straight where that meets, and boom. There is my cut chiseled handle, thumb rest. <laughs> okay, it's a little chunky right now. I'm gonna take a sponge, a little bit of light water, not too much, and I'm just gonna come in here and I'm gonna brush this up nice and clean. Getting all the sides, getting the top really good. 
And I think that that adds just a, that just adds a lot. It's something different. I don't see a lot of people cutting up their handles like that. So it's kind of how I make it my own a little bit. And that is done, guys. See that angle really good? Chiseled out nice. And that's really all, guys. So I hope you enjoyed. I hope to get this one and many more of them finished up this weekend. And uh, yeah, if you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave a message or shoot me an email. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye.